What is your accidentally caught your spouse cheating horror story? Dating this girl a few years back and I became really good friends with her brother just because he appreciated my help during a difficult time for their family. Their father had abruptly passed away. Two years into the relationship, the brother contacts me and asks to meet up for coffee and a serious conversation. Apparently, he caught his own sister with another guy, a mutual friend of ours, and this had been going on for like a year. As soon as he found out, I was told. Broke up with her. Still friends with her brother. Go figure. That must have been a tough decision for the brother. On one hand, you got your sister, and on the other, you have a guy who you're bros with, presumably. I think he did the right thing, though. All of us would probably want to be told too, wouldn't we? Story 2. Two weeks ago, I sent a message to a mutual friend asking to borrow a router. He didn't answer, but no worries, he lives nearby. I'll just stop by and grab it. I pull up to his house and start heading down the driveway. He has a long country driveway, so it's a few seconds before I see my car. I drive a company vehicle during the day. Already there, my heart began to sink. But they're friends and business partners, maybe. It's nothing. I got out of my van and look up to see the other guy shirtless in his bedroom. At this point, my heart is down to my stomach and I am visibly shaking. I go in and immediately head upstairs. He's alone, now clothed. I say, I came to borrow the router. Also, have you seen my wife? The car is here. He then proceeds to give the worst improv I've ever heard. Huh? No, she was here at some point, though. Whatever. I knew she was there and I just wanted him to admit it. I go down, take the router, and head back to the van where I finally encounter my wife, topless, trying to sneak around the side of his house. And now, here I am. Story 3. One night she told me not to come over because she wasn't feeling well, but then my sister wanted this hoodie back that she'd borrowed, so I thought I would stop over with chocolate and a Slurpee. I knocked on her door. She came to the upstairs window with only a blanket wrapped around her. I thought I told you not to come over. My sister needs her hoodie. Who's that? Says some male voice from her bedroom. Ah, I see how it is. I'll talk to you tomorrow, she says. Yeah, probably not. Have a good one. Story 4. One of my former co-workers loaded in an SD card with a scanned project file on it. He put it into the conference room PC. We were treated to naked pictures of his wife banging another guy. We were just stunned. This was in a senior budgetary meeting with the outside accountants and auditors. And he was sitting right there and we were looking at his wife and another guy going at it. I reached over and shut the projector off. Nobody said anything. He got up and walked out and drove off in his car. Left his phone and laptop just sitting on the table. He wound up driving to his parents' house three states away. He was gone for a week. To not only have it revealed to you, but revealed to people you know and work with at the same time and in such explicit manner, this dude got it bad. Like, I'm sorry, man. No one should have to figure out like that in that environment. And also just real talk? Wife, if you're gonna cheat, why take pictures of it? Come, like, come on. Surely you want it to be, like, secretive or what? I don't know. I guess cheaters aren't exactly thinking rationally anyway. Story 5. Went home and my husband wasn't home, which was weird for him at 8pm, when an hour earlier he told me he was going home. Had a gut feeling. Went to one of our female friend's house, who he claimed was like a sister. His truck is there. I knock. No answer. Try the door. It's unlocked. Walk into the living room, nobody there. Hear noises in the bedroom, walk in, and lo and behold, there they are. Tried to make it work over the next couple of months, but I can't get past it. Didn't even want him to touch me. Divorced four years ago. Story 6. Not me, but a close friend had an affair with another close friend and got caught because she lost an earring in the bed. After the entire blowout of a friend group and lots of shaming on both of them, she says he assaulted her, and everyone is stunned and doesn't know what to do. So to prove he didn't assault her, he had to show his wife and the police home security footage of the woman riding him like a horse while he was handcuffed. So he cheated, then was accused of assault, and got to top it off by showing his wife a tape with another woman. Edit. We didn't all instantly start calling the woman a liar. We didn't even have time to process a lifelong friend being an assaulter before it was set straight and she started backpedaling. So please stop messaging me that I'm a jerk and didn't believe her. Story 7. Not me, but one of my best mates. His girlfriend snuck a guy into their one-bedroom apartment whilst he was playing Xbox in the living room. I heard the argument through the mic after he heard a noise coming from the bedroom. He kicked her out and continued playing. Story 8. Didn't happen to me, but my closest friend growing up. He was making out with his girlfriend in the back of her car, which at the time she only had for a week, and he put his hand on the back of the car somewhere between the back of the headrests and the rear windshield. I guess the opposite of a dashboard? Anyway, he put his hand in a semi-fresh load of, uh, seed. Her answer was that her gum must have flew from her mouth and landed back there and the sun melted it into a weird substance. Of all the cover stories, this one is absurd, and it almost makes me believe it more, but also like, come 
on, girl. If you had this car for less than a week and- Okay, actually, it said fresh? Semi-fresh? Oh, what are you doing in this car? What an awful way to find out. Just gross. Story 9. My first long-term girlfriend and I were going to go to the same college. I got accepted, but had to start the semester after she did, meaning we would be slightly long distance for a few months. It wasn't too bad because we were only about two hours apart, so it was pretty easy to visit, but our relationship did struggle a bit. I remember one night I got a phone call from her, and when I picked up it was obvious it was a butt dial. I could hear her talking to some guy, but couldn't make out what they were saying. I called her and she picked up and I asked what was up. She said she was in bed, about to go to sleep. I told her about the butt dial and she said it was her friend Jack, who I met, who was asking to borrow something. I thought it was odd, but brushed it off. A couple weeks later, I was up there visiting her and I met a bunch of cool people, including this guy, Luke. After I got back from visiting, I get a Facebook message from Luke, saying, Look, man, I hate to be the one to say this, but I think you're an awesome guy, and you don't deserve this to be happening to you. She's been cheating on you with this guy pretty soon after she started here. I was devastated, but I had to hear it from her, so I called her and said, Are you cheating on me? She gave me a heavy sigh and said, Ah... <sighs> Well, at least I don't have to lie anymore. That guy's voice I heard wasn't Jack, it was the guy she was cheating on me with. I just trusted her so much that I took her word for it. Even though it was painful, I was grateful for Luke sending me that message. What's funny is that most of the people I met there that were her friends sided with me after the breakup. So when I started going there the next semester, I had a group of friends to support me, and most of them are still very close friends of mine to this day. Story 10. Boyfriend finally convinces me to have a trio after months of begging. I finally agree and our mutual friend comes over. Things get hot and heavy and when he starts banging her, he moans, Damn, you feel even better than usual. Everyone freezes. He tries to tell me that he was thinking about me while banging her and that it just felt different, but she felt so guilty that she confessed on the spot and begged me to forgive her. We don't really talk anymore. But last I heard, she'd been dating my ex for over a year. Oh, I'm sure that new relationship is plenty healthy. Nothing weird going on there. OP, you are good to be rid of these two people, I want you to know. And hell, it won't feel like it, maybe ever, but it's the truth. Don't need people like that in your life. Story 11. Wife had been texting a lot and was very evasive when I inquired about it, though she smirked when she thought it was making me jealous. Yeah, she's that kind of person. Turns out she left her email logged into my cell phone, so I noticed that she had a weekend Airbnb trip to a place that was a state away. We were living in different states at the time. That seemed to be the sort of quiet romantic getaway type. Total occupancy, two. Hmm, well, I thought that was fairly suspicious. So I monitored her Airbnb page, which was easy since we were friends on Airbnb, figuring that the owner might leave a comment about how great she was as a guest, which it turned out she did, except the review went something like this. Wife's name and guy not me were wonderful guests, and so on. Yeah, so anyone want to guess what the conditional probability is of that weekend trip involving infidelity? Eh, pretty sure it's high. Wife apparently panicked, asked Airbnb to remove the review, altered her name on the site, and then finally, having failed to get the review taken down, deleted her account. I eventually asked her about it during a counseling session, and she had a ready-made defense about how she'd meant to take the trip with another coworker, but that person's car broke down, so Guy's name ended up tagging along since Guy's name was that coworker's boyfriend, and they all stayed there together. But Guy's name signed the guest book, hence a totally honest mistake. In hindsight, I am pretty sure she was not telling the truth. We are not still married. Story 12. My ex-wife was an alcoholic, like, bad alcoholic. One time I get home from my night shift a little early and you guessed it, well, she was drunk. Well, I was feeling frisky and she's usually drunk when we bang anyway, so what the hell. I came on her. So we're banging and it's dark and she says, you need to hurry up. Uh, why? He's going to be home soon. Uh, who? My husband, you freaking idiot. Yeah, so I pull out and hop out of the bed and flip on the light. This woman looks absolutely baffled. She's crap-faced drunk and totally dumbfounded. I ask her, who did you think was banging you? What? Who did you think was banging you? What are you talking about? Never mind. I'll talk to you about it in the morning. I'm not drunk. Yeah, she didn't even know what the hell I was on about. So I go to bed on the couch and I'm sitting there going over stuff in my head and I hear her come down the stairs. She goes into the kitchen and I hear a drawer shut. A few seconds later, she's standing over me with a freaking knife. I promptly take the knife from her, tell her to go to bed, which she obliges to without saying a single word. I grab the kids, put them in the car, and drive to my mom's house where we spend the night. She starts blowing up my phone at 10 a.m., frantic that she doesn't know where the kids are. We have a mini intervention. She promises to go to AA. I attempt to erase the entire night from my memory, which obviously didn't work. About a month later, she hasn't held up to her AA agreement, and has pretty much gone back to her old ways. I come home from work and I see a freaking LA Dodgers hat on my couch. 
Uh, who is over? I ask. Nobody. Are you sure? Yeah. Don't frickin' screw with me. Who was over here? Are you calling me a frickin' liar? Yeah, I am. Because someone left their frickin' hat on my couch. At this point, she concocts some stupid story about a neighbor coming to borrow something. I knew she was lying. At this point, I'd pretty much given up on the marriage, but didn't know what to do. I was afraid that if I divorced her, she would somehow get the kids. A lot more screwed up stuff happens over the next month or so, including her making up a story about two Mexicans jumping her, my neighbor calling CPS, me catching her actually kiss a guy, two potheads admitting to having a trio with her. Then one day in July of 2008, I asked her to have a seat. I told her I was filing for divorce. She put up a fight, but I won full custody of my kids. I started dating again and have been with my new wife for nine years now. The end. I think this is the best possible ending here. At least for OP, I mean. I think it's very possible that time away from the relationship and kids and stuff will help OP's ex get on the right path. It's easier to focus on your own recovery when other factors are removed. Of course, there's going to be a bad period for a bit, I'm sure. But I do hope that she finds or has found the path to recovery. Because, I don't know, it's an addiction, and I don't think people deserve to suffer from this. I'm not saying it completely excuses her actions, though. I think the divorce was necessary, for the sake of the kids at the very least. And OP, I hope your new wife is fantastic and you're incredibly happy together. Story 13. I've posted about this before, but he changed his phone password. I left it for months until something just wasn't sitting right in my gut. I unlocked his phone with my thumb and I didn't even have to look. There was the messaging app open with a girl he was meeting the next day. I sent him to work without confronting him. I reset passwords through a long chain of emails to finally access the one associated with the messaging app. Lo and behold, he was sending approximately 10,000 emails per year for the last four years of our relationship. He was living a whole second life and hid it from everyone. Our relationship had never appeared stronger, and we'd been seeing a therapist to work on strengthening our communication for eight months, once a week. Clearly, he was hiding issues from the therapist as well. At the time, it felt like it ruined my life. I remember thinking very clearly, what did I do to deserve this? When I thought that, something inside of me just snapped. I calmly went and bought a giant coffee and cardboard boxes. I packed all his things up before he was home from work and changed our locks. The end. Edit. People are asking, so... I moved his things into storage and left the key along with a passive-aggressive note. He left me a short note, apologizing for what he did and owning up to it. He made a social media post telling everyone what he did and asked they leave him alone and support me. I saw him weeks later to talk and he didn't even try to hide what he had done. He was transparent. I loved him. And if he had come to me and admitted this was a problem, I would have helped him seek therapy or something. It wasn't the subject matter so much, that's the issue. An addiction is an addiction after all. It's the lying. OP has all the green flags in the world. And it's clear to me that OP really, really loved her ex-partner. What a really unfortunate way for things to end. He just couldn't communicate what was going on, or that he needed help, or that something was wrong at all. And as such, it couldn't be worked on. Hiding something like that from someone you're in a relationship with? Hiding it for four years? That is pretty far into unforgivable territory, in my opinion. So OP, you have a lot of grace in your heart, more than I think he even deserves, and you definitely didn't deserve this. Story 14. I opened my sister's door to ask for a hair tie, and she was banging my boyfriend. This was in high school, but still. I spit on them and yelled, why? I went downstairs to leave. My dad is in the living room on the computer and asks, what's wrong? I say, go upstairs and see for yourself. I ran outside and heard the yelling right away. My dad chased him out of the neighborhood naked. She got shipped to my mom's house shortly after that, and got pregnant at 17 years old. Edit. This was just the start with her. To answer some questions, I asked later why he did it, and he said because she would bang and I wouldn't. I was still a virgin and she was active at 12. No, I never spoke to him again. He's actually a druggie now. She slept with another one of my boyfriends a year later. Another one I found them kissing on our porch one day after grade 12. Fast forward to me being fresh out of high school, full-time job that I loved. She's knocked up with the number two and my dad made me quit my job and move in with her to watch my one-year-old niece so she could finish high school. She does, then has the baby and is too lazy to raise either, so I do for a year. I finally say, enough. I didn't want to leave my niece and nephew, but I was a kid and wanting my own life, and not to live in her apartment with her new boyfriend and two kids. I move back home and start anew. My nephew's father ends up getting custody. She didn't try to fight, and didn't show up to three different court dates to try to win him back at all. So she takes my niece and splits up north to hide in our hometown. By now, my niece is three, and from up until now, she turns 18 on the 9th, she has lived in four different provinces and Florida twice. 
My sister has run all over the country, going through probably a hundred men. She's been engaged more than I can count. Now back to me. When I moved back home, got my life back together, and got my own place about a year later, who comes knocking at the door? My sis and niece. Can we stay for a bit? Of course, you're my sister. She bangs my roommate, and doesn't take care of my niece. She's getting high and whatnot. My niece gets smoked in the head by one of the guys she's hanging around with, with a golf club. I take her in for stitches, tell her to go back home and stay there. She does, thankfully. She cleans herself up a bit and goes to college. Fast forward to me getting married and having my own two kids. She comes to visit with her fiancé and my niece. She was now six. And I catch my sister trying to blow my husband. Goodbye for another two years and eventually goodbye to the husband, too. That's a whole other issue. The jerk. Fast forward again and I'm with my first kiss from 13. My soulmate, barf. And unbeknownst to me, he has a drinking problem. She takes advantage of that. She has admitted in the past when I've asked why she keeps doing this that she can't stand that I've always been successful and happy, so she tries to ruin it or take it away. And she starts intimately texting my boyfriend. They texted for a few days and feel bad. I read them, and that was that. He did cheat with other women, but was also blackout drunk for the better part of two years. He quit, has been sober since December 12, 2014. Different man. Amazing man and father. My sister, her, on the other hand, uh, I finally had enough. And at our little sister's wedding, right at the end, I told her to never call me, message me, or try to reach me. Forget I'm her sister because she's never treated me as such. We haven't spoken since. That was 2013. She is still the same. My niece gets no attention. My mom has basically raised her when she's been close to them to take care of her. She comes to our house a lot too. My sister is too busy worrying about this man or the next, and too busy getting stoned, and too busy with her own life. She should never have been a mother. I'm... I'm no psychologist. I can't diagnose this or anything, but boy does she sound like a narcissist supreme. It's not even like a blatant disregard for other people in her life, because there is, in some aspects, but actively trying to sabotage your more successful and happier sister because you can't get your stuff together? OP, I am... I am insanely mad for you. What an upsetting situation. I can't believe how many chances you and your family have given her to. Like, I hope she gets her stuff figured out, but that is not your job to deal with. Story 15. One day my husband was getting ready for work and I saw him packing his GoPro case so he could take it to work. I thought, huh, that's weird. Why would he be taking it to work? So when he jumped into the shower, I replaced his GoPro with mine and thought I would look through the files when he leaves for work. My suspicions were on alert, because he had just taken a trip with some friends, a guy's only weekend kind of thing, fire up the camera and found three videos. Lo and behold, there he is in all his glory, barebacking a Filipino escort, looking and posing for the camera like he's some freaking adult video star. I was enraged, but also, looking at this idiot acting like he's a freaking adult film star was hilarious. Story 16. Not me, but a medical resident who I met on rotation recently. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. Super intelligent and hardworking, and training to be a trauma surgeon and as humble as they come. He had been married for two years to his wife. One night he gets off a 30-hour call early and heads home to surprise his wife with some flowers and her favorite dessert. It was the anniversary of the day they first met, only to find her in bed with a random dude. He was so exhausted and confused, he didn't know what to do. He just left and went back to the hospital. I saw him at 5 a.m., sitting in the parking lot hunched over crying. He didn't even have his phone with him, he was just sitting there. Man, nothing breaks your heart more than seeing a grown man cry. It's not something you see often. We called his dad up and he came and picked him up. The guy ended up taking a leave from his residency. Turns out it wasn't the wife's first time sleeping around. Hope he gets back on his feet. He will make an amazing physician. Judging by what he was about to do for his wife before he found that, I think he'll make an amazing husband one day too. Hopefully that time to the right woman. Story 17. Obligatory not me, but a friend, and I've posted this story twice before. Early 2000s. My friend's husband was deployed to Iraq. Together, they had a 10-year-old son and a happy marriage. One day, while he was deployed, I'm at home when another one of our friends calls and screams, Holy crap! Turn on the news right now! I turn it on to watch a human interest story about a fundraiser at a high school 30 miles away. They're doing Relay for Life or something. And as a surprise to one of the participants, they had her husband and father of her two grade school children do a video call from Iraq and displayed it on the football jumbotron. There, on our local news, is my friend's husband telling another woman and two kids how he loves them and can't wait to get back home to them. The news eats it up. 
about what a great guy he is. That night, our group of friends convened and decided how we would tell her. I was nominated, so the next day I had to sit her down and tell her what we saw. She called the news station and they were happy to let her come in and watch the story. They were also incredibly apologetic. Story has a somewhat crappy ending, I'm afraid. She called him out on his BS. They started divorce proceedings and he went on to legally marry the mother of his other kids, and mostly ignored his son from the first marriage. Not usually how it goes with service members. Kinda did a switcheroo here. Same as the other way though, this man is an absolute piece of garbage. Ignoring the first son too, like, you didn't have any connection there at all, yeah, screw you, buddy. Like, respectfully, I hope everything goes wrong in your new marriage. You deserve it. Story 18. Not me, but my neighbor, who is also my best friend. He was having his 30th birthday party and a bunch of people were over at his condo. He was intoxicated, a solid 7 out of 10, and spilled his beer on his shirt so he decided to change shirts. He asked me to come with him because he wanted to ask me something in private, so I went with him upstairs. He opened his bedroom door and we saw his boss going to town on his fiancé. I will never forget the look on his face, and his fiancé's face, and his boss's face. The silence was broken up by the, this isn't what it looks like, routine. My friend responded with, if this isn't what it looks like, why was his dong so far inside you? I stood there in amazement and was in a state of shock. His boss got dressed and I walked him out of the party. The POS even grabbed a roadie before he left. My friend came downstairs and immediately chugged a beer and announced, my now ex-fiancé was caught banging with my boss and I walked in on them with her legs behind her head. I didn't even know she could do that. Usually she just lays there. Let's get really messed up. He was kind of a mess for a while after that. Luckily, it was his condo. He owned and paid for both cars. His fiancée just quit her job to be a housewife. Ooh, instant karma. P.S. It took him a year to date again. I set him up with a coworker of mine. They are great together. The POS boss, well, he got what he deserved in the end. He was caught sleeping with the wife of the owner of the company he worked for. He was fired and my buddy was promoted. His fiance, well, she moved in with her parents again and had to give up her lavish lifestyle. Last time I saw her, she tried to flirt with me and be playful. Yeah, I shut that down. Told her to never speak to me again. Girlfriends come and go, but best friends only come by every once in a while. Story 19 was on a very rare date night. Kids at the grandparents' house. I'm looking extra cute, so I didn't even want to carry a purse or my cell. Used his phone on the way to the restaurant to confirm our reservations. After eating, used his phone again to get the movie times via text. Saw a name in the frequently sent. I asked him innocently, who's Lisa? He snatched the phone and said, my coworker. Fast forward three hours later and I'm throwing his clothes into his car after going online and viewing the hundreds of texts sent to several women. But still, I was a fool for love and opted to stay. I was with him my entire adult life, so I don't know anything different. That was 2006. We had our 19th anniversary in January. My divorce was final in March. He got married to another one of his many affairs in June. I'm enjoying being unattached and becoming an empty nester as of this fall. This man was having multiple affairs and just... Ugh, I just can't even fathom the level of cowardice needed to do this. Like, if you are that unsatisfied being with your partner, break up with them. Do both of you a favor. Don't be such a, I don't know, self-serving, hedonistic jerk. I want to say worse words, but we gotta stay monetized, folks. All I can say is, I don't hate a lot of people. This man, I do not hold a lot of love for, I'll just say that. Story 20. I was at Disney with our kids. Day two of a seven-day family trip, her father had been by that point talking up for about seven years. He and her mother told us when the kids were born, they were going to take us all to Disney when they turned seven. And seven years later, it finally happened. At that point, we'd been together for over a decade. Had a great job, a house, bunch of kids, and the full-on 100% honest-to-goodness American dream. Life was grand. Until I picked her phone to set an alarm on night two of our family vacation. There were so many texts. So many. I remember actually wanting to hurt her and having to leave the room. I immediately called the number and heard some frickin' strange dude answer with a sleepy, Hello, darling. I'm glad to hear from you. I wanted to die. The sense of unreality that I experienced, it was immediately numbing. Like I had just switched to the dark timeline. All I could think was, from this point on, everything that I've known about my life is going to change. Story 21. Had my suspicions for a couple of months, but no evidence or anything. My ex lived about 40 miles from me and we were 18. Dated and went to high school together for three years. She would come down into the city on weekends to spend time with me. I knew she had another group of friends in her town and a few were guys, but that didn't bother me. But I woke up in the middle of the night and messaged her on Facebook Book, only to notice she had been tagged in a photo with one of her friends. He was holding her up and kissing her. It was his new profile picture. I messaged the guy and calmly asked what was going on. He immediately responded and was confused. 
we decided to meet up for coffee the next morning that my ex was over, and the look on her face was priceless when she saw him walk in and sit beside me. She begged for our forgiveness and claimed she loved us both. Yeah, it turned out it had been going on for seven months, and that every time she left my place during the weekends, she was returning home to him for the week. Me and the other guy are now best friends and share a house with my fiancé and his girlfriend. Screw you, Taylor. Story 22. I met this girl who was working the late shift at a drugstore. We'd flirted a couple of times and eventually exchanged numbers and started sleeping together. After a few weeks, she invited me to go drinking at this crappy little bar she liked in the north side of the city. So we spend the night dancing together, drinking, and talking to people she knows. Eventually, a guy comes up to me and says, Great to meet you, finally. Congratulations on the engagement. <laughs> what are you talking about? I replied laughing as I choked on my drink a bit. Guy gives me a quizzical look and says, You're here with Corey. It's Paul, right? I raised an eyebrow and pointed a thumb to my chest, stating, Nah, man. Name's Kyle. We stared at each other, watching each other realize what was playing out this fateful night. Corey was engaged to a guy named Paul. I was the other guy. Paul worked out of town for weeks at a time. It was actually interesting how you could literally see the word travel around the small bar, drastically changing the vibe in the room. We left shortly after. She brought me, the guy she was cheating on her fiancé with, to her favorite bar. She brought me to a place full of friends that at least knew her well enough to know she was engaged to a guy named Paul, not Kyle. Messed stuff up. Didn't see her again after that. According to Facebook, Paul and Corey are currently married. Corey, what the hell are you doing, girl? Wh not only are you cheating on your fiancé, you made it so easy to get caught. You basically asked to get caught. You did it yourself. Poor guy didn't even know. I can't believe that engagement went through. Oh, boy. But some people feel like they're locked in and can't step out, so fair enough, I guess. Not fair enough. It's stupid. If they manage to work things out, great. All I'm saying, odds are low. Anyway... That is all the stories for today. I feel like I was harsher than I usually am, but infidelity gets me riled up. Hate it with all my heart. Hasn't even happened to me, just the concept of it makes me mad. Eh, anyway, for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.